Welcome to the Introduction to Computer Science, Basic Computing Concepts Including History. This is Lecture B. The component, Introduction to Computer Science, provides a basic overview of computer architecture, data organization, representation, and structure, structure of programming languages, networking, and data communication. It also includes the basic terminology of computing. The learning objectives for this unit, basic computing concepts including history, are to define what a computer is, describe different types of computers including PCs, mobile devices, and embedded computers, define the common elements of computer systems, describe typical hardware and software options for desktop, laptop, and server systems for home and business use, with an emphasis on healthcare systems, and explain the development of computers and the internet, including healthcare systems, up to the present time. This lecture will discuss what to consider when selecting a computer. Before you select any type of computer, whether it is a desktop, a laptop, or a server, it is important that you research the latest technologies. Several magazines and online sites provide up-to-date reviews and buying guides. These resources will often have much more information than what is available in the product information and specifications. Remember, too, that things change very quickly in the computer world. Even if you researched computers a year ago, you will want to check for updated reviews and information. New products are always coming out, and prices change quickly and often. This slide lists some online sites that provide the latest information. You can look at any or all of them to find accurate information. Choosing which computer system to purchase is difficult. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. Instead, there are many choices to make, each designed to support different needs. And to complicate matters further, there are new computers continuously being developed. So, the best computer for you today may not be the best one for you in six months or a year. Often, the newest and fastest computers are the most expensive. Many users find that slightly older and slower computers are a better fit for their budget. Before purchasing a computer, it is important to think about what you really need and how much you're willing to spend. First, determine your budget. Then, think about what you want to do with the computer. A general home business user will need something different than a user who plans to play the latest and greatest video games. You may want to look at your applications to see what their minimum requirements are, but those are not always helpful since you typically want something a lot bigger and faster than the minimum. You will also want to think about what and how much you want to store on your computer. Do you have a lot of applications, images, and videos? If so, you will probably want to get more storage than you think you will need. The best way to decide is to do some research. Make sure you look at up-to-date reviews and buying guides online. You can generally find articles that explain what the current options are for computers and what you might want or need. For a budget of $1,000, one of the possible options as of 2016 is the following configuration. Sixth generation Intel Core i5-6300HQ processor, 23.8-inch LED backlit touch display, 3D camera, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 1 terabyte hard drive, wireless 802.11ac, and Bluetooth 4.0, Windows 10 operating system or OS. Upgrades are usually available for memory and hard drives. A tower is a good option if you need a lot of processing power for video editing or online gaming. However, towers are not very portable. Some users do not care what kind of case they get, but for those concerned with space, an all-in-one or small-form factor case may be attractive. The all-in-one computer shown here has the computer integrated with the monitor, so there is no separate case for the computer. Cheaper computers have integrated video, meaning there is not a separate or discrete video card. This is fine if you don't plan to play videos or games on your computer, but if you do, you will want a video card with your computer. The video card may have its own memory or use shared video RAM or both. 
Shared video RAM means that the video card will share the regular computer RAM. This leaves less RAM available for your computer. If you use graphics-intensive applications, such as video editing software or online gaming, you will probably want a video card that uses its own memory without any shared RAM. For a budget of $1,000, the available features and options for a laptop are not the same as for a desktop. Laptops are usually less powerful and have less storage and memory than a similarly priced desktop. This is the price you pay for portability. Laptops are much smaller and slimmer than desktops, so everything that is in a laptop has to be smaller as well. Here is one of the possible configurations you can get for $1,000 in 2016. 17.3-inch monitor. Intel i7-6700HQ quad-core processor. 16 gigabytes RAM. 1 terabyte hard drive. Blu-ray burner. 3 USB ports. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960M. 802.11ac Wi-Fi. Bluetooth 4.0, Windows 10. This is a high-end laptop. If you plan to use common home and business applications, you may find a laptop in the $500 to $700 range that will fit your needs. Two types of a hard drive are available for laptops. The traditional hard disk drive is the least expensive option. It has a moving platter very similar to a record player. The moving parts generate heat as they spin so the laptop has to spend a fair amount of power cooling itself down. Constant motion causes wear, and the average lifetime of a traditional hard disk drive is about four years. Solid-state drives are newer options for hard drives. The advantage to solid-state drives is that there are no moving parts, which keeps the computer much cooler. This is really good for a laptop because it does not need as much fan power to cool itself which in turn increases battery life. A solid-state drive's lifetime on the average is much longer, and they are faster than the traditional hard disk drives, but they are considerably more expensive. Optical DVD and CD drives are no longer standard on laptops today, but they are an available option. Because downloads are a much more popular way to access new software, music, and video, Having a CD or DVD drive is not essential. Nevertheless, it is still useful to have a DVD drive for those times when you do want to install new software or watch a video on a DVD. Also, Blu-ray drives are available on higher-end laptops. Connecting to a network with a laptop can be done in various ways, and it is very similar to connecting to a network with a desktop computer. As with a desktop computer, Laptops have ports for a modem and for Ethernet. All laptops today have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. A docking station is very useful for a laptop if it will be connected to a monitor, keyboard, and mouse on a desk. These peripherals all connect to the docking station, which also connects to the laptop. This avoids the need to plug in each separate cable to the laptop. The docking station is specific to the make and model of the laptop. For convenience, some people find it useful to purchase an extra battery so that they can prolong the time that they are able to use the laptop without charging or connecting to the docking station. Also, a travel mouse can make using the laptop easier when you are on the go. Travel mouse devices are often wireless. In addition to the options we have just discussed for a general laptop, there are also several other categories of laptops. The smallest laptops are called netbooks and ultra-portables. They have displays that range from 9 to 12 inches. They do not have optical drives. They have only a single-core or dual-core processor, and their prices are very reasonable. They are very good for simple tasks, such as email and word processing, but they cannot handle a heavier workload or play movies like a general laptop can. The next step up is the thin and lights with 13-inch displays. These usually have a dual-core processor. A MacBook is a good example of a thin and light. On the other end of the spectrum, there are laptops that can be used as desktop replacements. 
They have much larger screens, usually 17 to 20 inch displays, and contain features similar to desktops. They can have a DVD, Blu ray drive, separate video card, and a fast CPU. But because these systems are much more resource intensive, they have a shorter battery life. They are also the most expensive. They are not really intended to be as mobile as the lighter laptops are. They are usually pretty heavy, but they are good for users who need the full power of a desktop and only occasional mobility. There are other things you need to consider when selecting a PC, either a laptop or a desktop. For all PCs, there is usually a one year warranty for parts and labor with extended warranties available. Be sure that you read the fine print about how the repairs work. Some warranties stipulate that the repair person will come to you. Others will require you to drop off or ship the computer to the manufacturer to be repaired. If the latter is the case, you will need to keep the box to keep the warranty valid. Sometimes the warranty will only be honored if the parts are shipped back in the original box that they came in. Every PC needs security software. Some computers ship with security software installed. It is recommended that you add security software from an outside vendor. The security software should include antivirus, anti spyware, anti adware, and should be easily updatable. Because the threats to your computer are constantly evolving, you have to make sure that your security software updates frequently. There are free versions available of these types of software, but they generally are not as complete as the software that you pay for, and they do not offer any guarantees. All PCs should be backed up regularly. See Lecture A for more information about backing up. Professional versions of operating systems provide backup capabilities that home versions do not usually include. Software is available that makes it easier to back up and restore your system, and some of it is actually free. You can back up to an external hard drive or to a DVD. There are also online subscription services that will back up systems over the internet. This is advantageous for businesses where off site backups are required. As with all things electronic, printers range from very inexpensive to very expensive. Selecting the right printer depends on your needs. For home users, inkjet printers are a good choice. They are inexpensive and print in color. They are slow, however, and do not last as long as laser printers. Their ink dries out over time, even if the printer is not being used. For a networked computer at an office, a laser printer is a better choice. They print much faster, can handle many more print jobs, and will last longer than an inkjet based on the number of printed pages. Color laser printers are extremely expensive. Businesses will often opt to purchase a cheaper inkjet printer for occasional color printing and use a laser printer for everyday black and white print jobs. For home office or small business, there are all in one machines that are a printer, copier, scanner, and fax. Essentially, a printer and scanner combined with a phone line connection. Mobile users may purchase portable inkjet printers that are small and battery or car charged. Determining which printer is the right printer for you will involve reviewing its specifications. The most important ones are listed here. Resolution is measured in dots per inch or DPI. Higher resolution means sharper, more detailed output. If you are printing only text documents, resolution is not as important as when you are printing detailed images. Print speed is measured in pages per minute. This may not be as much of a concern for a home printer, but certainly is for a networked office printer. Printers can be connected directly to a computer using a USB connection. Computers can also connect to printers through a network either wirelessly or through an Ethernet connection. An example is a networked office printer. Another important element to evaluate when choosing a printer is the cost to print. Printer cartridges can be expensive. You will want to know how many pages you can expect to print before the cartridge needs to be changed. A cheaper printer that has a high cost to print may be more expensive over the long run 
than a printer with a higher price but a lower cost to print. Depending on what you want to do with your computer, you may opt to add external wireless speakers and a wireless keyboard and mouse. Wireless options reduce the number of cables you have to tangle with, and they also give you more flexibility for situations such as standing with a handheld keyboard or mouse in a doctor's office or sitting in your living room watching movies through your computer on the flat screen display across the room. Be aware, however, that they are battery powered, and those batteries require replacement, which can quickly get expensive. The computer systems used for healthcare applications depend on the requirements of the applications. Most electronic medical records, or EMRs, and medical health records, MHRs, use the client server model where the server hosts the application and a local client machine runs the application where it is needed such as in the exam room. For this model, you would need a server, multiple client PCs, and a network that connects it all together. Healthcare offices will often need scanners for inputting data into an EMR. Typically, medical offices need small, reliable scanners. For example, they may need a small scanner at the reception desk for scanning insurance or ID cards. Backup systems are a necessity for any type of EMR. Servers can be backed up using external hard drives. They contain far too much data for a backup to be stored on DVDs. In addition, two backups may be needed, one that is on-site and one that is off-site. Internet access is important whether the network is a wireless or Ethernet connection. You will need to select an Internet service provider and make sure you have a connection to it. Security is vitally important as well. A security expert should set up a network firewall and have security software available on the servers and on all of the client PCs. When purchasing a server, you again need to consider what you need it to do. Some systems have a maximum number of users, so additional servers may need to be purchased. A server usually contains the highest-end multi-core processor. It also contains a large amount of RAM, which ensures that many programs and processes can be run simultaneously. It also needs a large amount of storage, which is usually implemented as a RAID or redundant array of independent disks. This is a way to ensure data is not lost in case of disk failure. Also, the server needs to have connections to a fast network and have multiple instances of these connections. Depending on your applications, you may also need to install a database and or web server on your server. Client PCs are the machines that run the application where it is needed. For example, in an exam room. There are a couple of options for this. Desktops are an option for users who are usually at their desks and for exam rooms where there is enough room to install a desktop. Desktops are not going to need wireless connections since presumably they can connect through an Ethernet connection and cable to the network. They are usually plugged into a wall, so you do not have to consider battery life. In other situations, laptops, netbooks, and tablets would be another possible client PC. In this scenario, the user, who might be a physician or nurse, has his or her own portable laptop computer. This eliminates the need for dedicated space for a desktop in an exam room but it does require using wireless for the network connection. Battery life is a consideration for laptops. Charging stations and extra batteries may be needed. This concludes Lecture B of Basic Computing Concepts, Including History. In summary, this lecture explored the process of selecting a new computer. Determining your needs and budget are the first step of the process. Consider which applications you will be running and how much storage you need. The latest computers will be the fastest and have the latest options. Often, you do not need the extra speed or options, so purchasing an older computer with fewer bells and whistles may suffice. Options will affect the price. Things such as the case, the video card, the monitor, and the printer should also be included in your budget. It can be easy to overspend when looking at new computers. You will need to do some research to determine which options you will need. 
When purchasing a laptop, expect to pay more than for a comparable desktop. Laptops come in a variety of sizes, from netbooks to large laptops which act as desktop replacements. For any computer system, security software and a backup system are crucial. Finally, in typical healthcare settings, applications are run on a server but accessed by client PCs. This requires purchasing both. For the server, you'd want to purchase a fast computer with multiple cores. It should also have a large amount of RAM and disk storage. A client PC can be a desktop or a laptop.